This agent is a novel antibody drug conjugate composed of an anti-HER2 antibody with the same amino acid sequence as trastuzumab. The chemotherapy payload is a topoisomerase 1 inhibitor. And finally, there is a cleavable linker. The drug has a high drug to antibody ratio. And what's really unique is that there is evidence of a bystander effect in that it has the ability to kill adjacent tumor cells that are HER2 1 plus or 2 plus by IHC, but FISH negative, the so-called HER2 low subtype. And this is actually being formally looked at in a trial evaluating this agent uh, against treatment of physician's choice in this uh, population of patients that are HER2 low. The Destiny Bresto 1 trial was a single arm phase two study of 184 patients with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer previously treated with trastuzumab and tamsine or TDM1 who received trastuzumab deruxtecan at a dose of 5.4 milligrams per kilogram. And the previously reported overall response rate was 60.9%, median progression-free survival 16.4 months. And this was really remarkable given that the median number of prior therapies was six and the median duration of response uh, at the first analysis was 14.8 months. At this conference, with an additional 9.4 months of additional follow-up, the overall response rate is now 61.4%, median progression-free survival up to 19.4 months, and median duration of response 20.8 months. Although the data are still immature, the preliminary median overall survival was 24.6 months. We've learned that the responses are durable and this continues to be a highly active agent. I think the waterfall plot from this trial has made an indelible impression on all of us and the updated data presented again reaffirms that this therapy is an important option for patients with HER2 positive metastatic breast cancer. The overall safety profile uh, reported recently at San Antonio was consistent with prior reports with this agent. The toxicity that we're all most concerned about uh, with this therapy is ILD, as it's unfortunately led to some treatment-related deaths in the past. As determined by an independent adjudication committee since the August 2019 cutoff, there were three additional ILD events reported. Although we're still learning about risk factors and the mechanism of this worrisome side effect, we did see with longer follow-up that most of the first ILD events occurred during the first 12 months of treatment. The risk of adjudicated ILD, drug-related ILD, appears lower uh, after approximately 12 months on treatment, suggesting that the risk of developing this side effect is not related to a cumulative dose of uh, trastuzumab deruxtecan. But regardless, attention, continued attention uh, to pulmonary symptoms such as dyspnea, cough, um, shortness of breath uh, are all um, warranted. Continued attention is warranted and careful monitoring uh, is of course um, uh, uh, recommended. Well, I would say that we're fortunate, even in the face of a pandemic, to have several new options for within the last year for patients with HER2-positive metastatic breast cancer. We have trastuzumab deruxtecan, as we just reviewed, for patients with at least two prior lines of therapy in the metastatic setting. In the second line and beyond, we have the tecatinib, capecitabine, and trastuzumab uh, triplet based on the HER2-climb data. We have an expanded indication for neurotinib in the metastatic setting in combination with capecitabine based on the NALA trial, uh, also after two prior lines of treatment in the metastatic setting. And finally, hot off the presses just last month, uh, we now also have margituximab in combination with chemo 
for patients who have received two or more prior anti-HER2 therapies, at least one of which was for metastatic disease. As these therapies haven't been compared head to head, we make decisions based on various factors, such as preference for an oral versus an IV therapy, toxicities of these agents, disease burden, and of course, patient preference. The choices are individualized for each patient and necessitate full discussions and disclosures regarding risks and benefits of each of these therapies. But again, the good news is we've made uh, continued progress in expanding options for our patients with HER2-positive MBC. Mm-hmm.